is the Cinch. This is a huge book binding tool. It allows you to bind all kinds of books from planners to recipe books, uh, mini scrapbooks, make your own calendars. Anytime you need something that you want to put together in some sort of collection, this is your tool to use. This is the We Are Memory Keeper Cinch tool. Today we're going to be making a really fun recipe book. And I'm going to feature this collection here from Simple Stories called Hearth and Home. This is brand new in our stores now. I've already used most of the papers, but this is sort of what the collection kit looks like. Hi, Kathy, and another Kathy. Hi. Um, thank you for joining me today. So we're going to be playing with the Hearth and Home scrapbooking collection. Um, I really love using a collection of papers because that way you know everything coordinates you don't have to worry. You can mix and match within the collection and it's going to look great. You can always add some um, cardstock that is the same colors, but I'm just simply using the papers in this kit. And we are going to feature the Cinch We Are Memory Keepers binding machine. This is the big, this is the big one. This is the big daddy. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to use this and how to bind a book. We also sell this in a mini version. This is the mini version. Let me take it out. I think it's be easier to see it side by side. They both can do the same thing. It's just that this can do on a bigger scale, can do more sizes of books. And here we go. There's a baby one next to it. And uh, this one, you're limited to the size of, ring, of rings that you can do. This one gives you more options. And this one you can omit some of the where the, the holes are placed. So if you're just getting started, the mini cinch is a great great way to go. I am going to be featuring the big cinch today, the original, the big daddy. Um, there is a video for this one already. Um, after this video is over, I will go back, read through your comments, see if there's any questions to answer, and I'll find a link to this and this video and post that link in the comments of this one for you. Okay. The other things you'll need is a pair of wire cutters, and that is to cut the wires, and of course you're going to need wires. Wires come in a number of different colors and sizes and styles. I'm pretty much just going to use the 5 8 style today, but I don't know if you know this, but there's also spirals for a spiral bound, and these come in different colors, this is just the clear, but you can spiral bound instead of cinch binding if you like. And then I, you know, there's pink, there's silver, there's gold. Each box comes with four 12 inch long O wires or spirals, depending on which, what you're choosing. And then you are clipping them with the wire cutters to the size of your book. And then you're binding your papers together to create an, a, a mini album, a scrapbook, a notebook, a journal, whatever you want to do. Okay, so we're gonna go over the basics of the machine and the different parts. Then I'll jump over to making the recipe book and then we will bind it all. Sound good? I think this would be a fun gift to make for someone, but the cinch itself is a great gift to ask Santa for. Okay. So looking at the cinch, this is in its closed position. That just meaning that the handle is down. This strap right here holds the handle down for storage. You need a really big handle like this because you need to have the, the leverage to be able to punch through chipboard and layers of paper. So to use it, push down on the handle just a little to loosen up this strap, and then the strap will pop off. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have let go so hard. I, let, I just let it go and it jumped, but you, that's how heavy duty it is. So you're grabbing this every time you're using it and pushing down. This, this action is what punches the holes into your um, journal. And if I turn it around, on the back side right here, I'll give you this view, right in here, is when you push this lever, this part squeezes down. Do you see that? It pushes down. And that's what the cinching does. That is the, mech the part of the tool that you use to push, squeeze, or cinch these wires together to create the binding on your recipe book, your planner, whatever it is you're going to do. If you take a, while we're on this side, I want you to look at right here. Look at this cute little, this cute little face right here. Can you see that guy? Isn't he adorable? 
that is your um, your tool, your mechanism for moving this little uh, pointer. See, this looks like a little geotag right here. When you turn this, it moves that little geotag left or right. And you are, that is your indication for what size wires you're using. Now, your wire size depends on how thick of a book you're going to make. This is the 6.25, I think, which translates to 5 8 So I need to set this to 5 8 So I'm just going to turn this little knob until it's pointing directly at 5 8 What that does is it just it tells this how far down to push for that exact wire measurement. I just love We Are Tools because they have, it's just, they're just foolproof. They're so easy to use. Um, it does come with a very thorough um, instruction manual. Um, it's, it's really not hard to use at all. And remember, a lot of this is other languages, so don't be intimidated. And really, this is, all, this is the only page you really need is this one, because it's really that simple. There's three steps. You punch it, you bind it, you cinch it. It's that simple. We're going to go through all three. I'm going to turn this back onto the side now. So you can look at this feature of the tool. I just love it. Everything is organized for you. you. If you do not like math, if you don't like measuring, this is a great tool to use. It gives you per perfection without all the math work. Okay, so th these little guys are actually hangers. And when it comes time to bind your book, you are going to put the wires, after you cut them to size, right on these little guys. And they, they just hang right there. It's kind of like having another hand. And then you're going to be able to just take your punched papers and feed them right on those hooks before binding. So it's going to be that, that simple. And now let's get to the actual punching part because that's what makes the holes in your, in your papers and your book covers. So this right here is your, is your basic, your starting measurement. And this little bar right here pushes out and extends all the way out to there. And that this gives you from zero to 13. Now let's say you're making an even bigger book than that. This little leverage, I'm gonna turn this up so you can see this lip right here, you can actually crank down and make flat for like a little foot so that you, you can extend your paper beyond that measurement. So if you're making a really big book, you have that option with this tool, which is really nice. Another part of this binder is right here on this side. This little tiny lever right here, if I push down, see it locked down, this little peg locks down. That's important for when you're making books that are larger than six inches. We're gonna do an eight inch book today and you'll see what, where that comes into play. Okay, and then finally we have all these beautiful little blue knobs. Each one of these, one through 12, are the 12 holes that can punch at a time. Now you don't have to use all those. Let's say you want, you want a little bit of wire here and a little bit of wire here on your book. You can take away, let's say, the nine and the four simply by pulling those out. When you pull those out, I'll give you this top view. Can you see that? I pull them out. There's two sticking out. Those that eliminates those holes from being punched. So now they cannot be punched. I've punched the heck out of this paper, but I'll show you what I mean. I'll put it in this way. Okay. See that? It skipped right there and right there where I had those pegs removed. So that's what that's for. But the other thing that that is for is that it helps you to get all of your holes lined up when you have more than a six inch book. So if your book is more than six inches and you need more holes than that, this helps you get the alignment perfect and so that you don't have holes going off the edge. I'm telling you that because the very first time I used it, I didn't read the instructions and here's what can happen. Okay, right here, look what happened. I ran off the edge and so now I have half my holes cut on the edge of my book. That doesn't look good. That's not professional. I want it, you want this edge to match this edge perfectly. Follow the directions, <laughs> read the instructions, or watch this video. Hey, it's always helpful to let somebody else make the mistakes, right? So um, I just don't like to read, I, I like, I want to fail first, I guess, I don't know. So let's go, let's, we're going to actually use this in a minute. I'll show you the recipe book. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because this is all about the video, but I just want you to give you an idea of using it. So I'm going to set this aside and bring back my Simple Stories collection. Now your covers can be whatever material you want. They can be chipboard, they could be acetate, they could be plastic, they could be paper that you've laminated. They can just be paper. It's totally up to you. I am going to do chipboard. I've started making my book already. So this is going to be my cover. This paper, is, this is one of the big 12 by 12 papers from this set. I just thought this was so cute. It looks like a little kitchen counter with all the fun little 
salt and pepper shaker and the mixer and everything and the scale. And so this is a six by eight. I chose six by eight for my book. And then I've, this is the inside of my cover and I want my binding to be up here. So when you open the book, I, that's why I arranged this family to read this way. You, of course, I thought about doing it this way because recipe cards, this, ha this particular um, pack of paper includes a 12 by 12 piece of paper that has six recipe cards on it. And I just cleft those apart and they're double sided. So you have like the ingredients, prep time, cook time serves, and then you have the directions and like from the kitchen up. And I just thought that was so cute. The standard business or standard index card is typically three by five. But that's pretty small. I don't like using that size for recipe cards and typical recipe card size is four by six, which is what this is. Okay. So that being said, I originally thought I would make a book that had my, had my recipe cards going in this direction. And so I would have two like this, but if I kept it at it, which would work, but I would certainly have to then bind it like this. And if I, I would have to make my book bigger in order to have a little bit of allowance for the binding. Otherwise my binding would, would go just into like right on that line. And I just, I don't think that would look good. It would look, you know, so I decided I'm going to go the other direction. Um, you certainly can make this book any size you want. It's totally up to you. Okay. So anyway, this is my front cover, a six by eight piece of card of chipboard that I cut the paper down to fit there and there. And this is another one of the cutouts that was in this set. So that's my front cover and that's the inside of my front cover. Then just for fun and also for this video to show you that you can use other kinds of materials. This is a piece of acetate that I cut to six by eight. Added a little bit of washi, which is also from this collection. So here are the, it's a whole little set of washi that perfectly coordinates. I love this set because, um, the set of this collection because it's hearth and home. Um, so there's a little bit of kitchen stuff in it, but it's not strictly that. So you can use it for a lot of different themes or, or occasions. And so the washi tape definitely fits that. There's nothing kitcheny about this at all or recipe -y about this at all, but they're just so cute. So I used that as a little liner on the edge of the acetate. And these embellishments are from the 12 by 12 foam sticker sheets, which I thought were really cute. And I thought, you know what? I think I maybe will use some of these in on my cover. And I love to use this, use the, when they have a sticker sheet on a clear piece, you can put it right over your project and see what it looks like. And I was thinking I would do this recipes and it looks like the eye is the center. So I'm going to lay that down first. And I'm just not going to go too far above, above that. I'm going to leave, kind of leave that top inch. I'm not going to need a whole inch, but I'm going to kind of leave that space clear for the binding because it's going to have to fit under there. So that will be just fine. That sort of line that I have it on. The other thing that's cool about foam stickers is they're pretty forgiving sticky wise. So you can kind of pick them up and stick them down a couple of times before they become permanent. And they're also way more flexible than regular stickers are. So you can kind of mold them around things just a little bit. See, that is so cute. And I got a couple of them a little crooked, so I have time to get them right. I'm just using the ruler to kind of help me make sure I got them. Got them kind of in a straight line there. I think that's really cute. And then in addition to those embellishments, there's also these, look at these puffy stickers. They're tiny little guys, so cute and so puffy. I like this kiss the cook one. <laughs> so I'm gonna place that right here, I think. That's adorable. And there's there's or lemons and the homes, the flowers. Be humble and stay kind, or be humble and kind. Uh, look at this, this little exclamation, and he's just he's just expressing love. I'm gonna put that right over my little birdie. That's really cute. And then you guys, if you know me, you know I love ephemera packs. Ephemera packs are just the most bang for your buck. There's actually two in this collection. This is the um, sort of bits and pieces, and then this one's gonna be more for your journaling if you've wanted to write the things down. Um, and they're mostly going to be home, but there are a few kitcheny ones or recipe like ones that I sort of already picked out. Let me grab those. 
Oh, and also, of course, the enamel dots. I love those because they're perfectly coordinated. Okay, so here's some of the kitcheny ones that I sort of picked out that I thought I could decorate with as well. Like, here's a different version of that guy. And he's just a little bit smaller, but I think it would be really cute to pop that on top of the other one. So I'm going to use a little bit of foam tape. Don't worry, I'm not going to decorate every single page for you. I just thought I would do the um, cover. Now, if you don't want to have a lumpy, bumpy cover and you want it nice and, and, and um, streamlined, you could, you could choose to use embellishments that are not uh, dimensional, like this foam tape for your cover. You could put those things on the inside. And another thought is you could, if you, once you have your, um, their, your paper on there and any flat embellishments that you want, you could then laminate this piece before binding it to, to have really good protection. Um, certainly that would be nice in a, in a recipe book. Or on a recipe book or a planner so this is just slightly smaller so I'm gonna kind of center it so it looks like it has a shadow behind it that's so cute see the dimension that gave there and then these little printed poppies I just put some of the um, ephemera or the uh, epoxy dots on top of those for a little bump my my very lovely little birdie can I, guys, can I tell you guys a secret I really love birds in print and in artwork but I, in person I'm not a fan <laughs> I don't know why okay recipes I think that's good for the for the embellishing okay so I showed you so that's the cover and then that's the inside cover I'll set that aside then my next page was gonna be this um, clear acetate and so I'm pretending like it's bound so that it would go there and then this one and then my very first page is simply a six by eight piece of paper trimmed from one of these in the set and then I had scraps left over. So what I decided was to cut those scraps to two inches by eight inches. And I put a really strong adhesive. What I used was score tape. And I put that adhesive on three sides, the two sides and the long bottom, and left the top open to create a pocket. And then I took one, since these are gonna have to be double-sided, and I might wanna print or write my recipes on here and then laminate these later, I'm gonna, my idea was I would slide them in here. That way when you're using the book, you can find the recipe you want and pull it out. It's laminated and protected. You can keep your book to the side. That was sort of my thought process. And then also it allows room to then add more, or if you take a photo of it, or a photo of your family enjoying it, or maybe what would be really fun is to add a few blank note cards or tags to these pockets. And then after you create, after you ha serve it to your family or your friends, you could ask them to write you a review <laughs> and you could put their little notes in there. Too salty, you know, and you can remember that, that Johnny doesn't like onions or whatever it is. <laughs> okay, so little pocket, I slid that in there and I'm just gonna make sure that this top space is free. I'm, I got plenty of room there. So I'm gonna pretend my binding is here and close that. And then I just made a few pages similar to that. All of these papers are from the set. These, these are all made the same way. I add a little ephemera on this one. So cute. This one I have, I added a little of the salt and pepper puppy sticker. Isn't that cute? Right to the recipe card. I love that the recipe cards themselves are nice and big, plenty of room to write. You don't have to write super tiny to make it fit. And then here's the last one I was putting together. I'll just show you how, how I make that pocket. This wood paper is in that set. Isn't that cute? I love that wood grain paper. It looks like a, kind of like a butcher block or something. So I'm putting a really, really strong tape right down there at the bottom and the two short sides to make my pocket. Now, if you're fancy and you want to actually stitch on your paper, you can do that. If you have a sewing machine and you want to stitch your paper, that the look of that is just precious. I love it. I, ha I and I have a sewing machine, but I have no idea how to use it. <laughs> I, that's just not my forte. So I'm gonna use tape. And of course, all of these papers, I'm just happen to be making it super simple and easy for myself and using a coordinated set. You can certainly do your own thing, add your own ink and your own designs and your own embellishments. Make it as fancy or as not fancy as you want. I wanna make sure that when you open it, these words are legible in this direction. Um, so if you're using a, or a directional print, 
that's something to consider. If you don't care, then that doesn't matter. But I want it to look like this on the back side when you flip the page up. So I'm going to make sure that I put this down here. And whenever I make a pocket, I like to put two fingers inside of where the pocket would be, one or two, depending on how big your pocket is. And then line it up. And I'm choosing for all these pockets to come up from the bottom just a little and it's not necessary it's just like I like that aesthetic of having a little strip of the original paper at the bottom and that is how I make the pocket and then I can slide in recipe cards okay and then that would go like this and then I have my last piece of acetate that I can put there and I thought I would put a little washi on that one and I think maybe this color is really cute. I've never used this particular one, so I have to find the end. There she is. Okay. So it's probably hard to see the clear on my desk, but it's right here. I'm going to overestimate how much I need. And I'm going to put it right at the bottom, like lining up the edge right at the bottom of that and I'm going to wrap it around and then to cover up this white spot and also to reinforce it I'm going to put another strip on this side and then my book will be ready to be bound so I think this would be a really fun gift like I said and it would be fun to make for other people can you imagine like have any of you done cookie exchanges this year how fun would it be to collect recipes from everybody that was in your cookie exchange, you can have all those recipes printed and copied and all of that, or you can do it yourself on your computer. And then you could make little bound recipe books with all those recipes for everybody that attended. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, and then you could certainly add more embellishments to this, but I've added that little lip there. This would be, this is a really fun thing to do on planners as well. Okay, and then that's my last page. And then this is my back cover. Another one of these cutouts is from this paper set. And then this paper is in this cute. Let's compare that to my front cover. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? They totally coordinate. This is just a scaled down version of that. Laura, you think it'd make a great gift? I know it would be. Okay. So before I bind and punch and everything, I'm going to make sure that I have everything organized the way that it needs to be before you punch, before you commit. So let's do that. All right. So front cover looks good. Then I want that one. Yes. 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 Ah, put that one in wrong. So it's like that and like that. Because I wanted the washi to be on the end that you were touching. I got that right on that one. Okay. So those are all mine. Now we can't bind all of these at the, or punch holes in all these at the same time. So we're going to have to do it in steps, which is another reason why I love this because it's going to help us do it right. Okay. I'm going to start with the cover and I've got this in the starting position. This is all the way closed. Not like this. It's all the way closed. All of these are pushed in. I want to punch every single hole at this point. So I'm going to put it in here and push it all the way to the back. So it's flush to the back. Whoops, don't let it move. Okay. Try to make sure, before I punch, I want to make sure you have the right angle. Can we see? See, it slid, so you pull it forward, see, so it push it all the way to the back. Okay. So we push it, we put it in there, make sure it's flush, make sure this is all the way in. Grab the handle and pull down. Okay. So that should have punched 12 holes. Okay. This end looks great, not close to the end at all. Now I'm going to open this all the way up so I have plenty of room to work here. And this is where this little, let me turn it on the side here. This is where, remember we looked at this little lever right here that pushes this peg down? This is where it comes into play. This is the genius of this book or of this binder that I, and the part that I missed before when I messed up my other book because I didn't do this step. What you do is you're going to put this in here. And what you're looking for is the second to last hole that you punched. So for me, it's this hole right here. I need that hole. I'm going to line it up in here all the way to the back. And what I want to do is get that second to last hole 
inside of that um, peg. I'm going to turn it on the side so you can see what I just did. Okay, let me lift it up. So I've got the second to last hole right underneath of that little peg, and I'm going to push that down. Sorry, I'm doing this upside down. Push that down so that it fits right into that second hole. There we go. You see that? So now it is locked in there. And then I just need to make sure that it's it's straight. And then I need to refer to my guide. Remember I said this is the one page you need to pay attention to, the quick guide. So we've, we're in the middle of punching, right? You, your book in inches. So this is how big your book is. My book is eight inches along. That's the side that you're, you're punching. That's how, that's the measurement, eight inches. So I need to pull peg number four because my book is larger than six inches. So eight inches, pull peg number four. These are numbered. Uh, let me turn it so you can see. These are numbered. So I'm going to find four and pull that out. Let's look at where number four lands. It's right on the edge of this book right here. If I were not to pull that, I'd get a half punch or a quarter punch right there. And it would not look cute. <laughs> So I pull four, everybody else is in place, my peg's down, my book is pushed to the back straight, and I'm gonna push down. Can you see that this guy did not, is, I'm gonna hold it down for you. Let me use this to help me. And then lift this up so you can see. See everybody else pushed down, and he stayed up? That's what we want. Oh, and it releases the peg. Okay. <gasps> Yay, look. So this edge, perfect, perfectly matches this edge. I don't have a weird half hole there. Yay, happy dance. Okay, now we just gotta do that again. So we're gonna repeat that process on the rest of the book. Let's do the back cover now. Look at you, especially if you did something directional, we wanna make sure we're doing it on the right thing, on the right side, which is the eight inch, and this is the top. I've got this all the way closed, got all my pegs pushed in, push this all the way to the back flush and punch. Okay, I've got 12 holes punched. Open this all the way. Push this to the edge, looking for the last second to last hole. Put that in the little leverage uh, lever hole there. Make sure this is flat and arranged in the right order. Pull peg number four, because my book is eight inches long. Pull four, that's the most important for your second punch here. Okay. Oh, lift the lever. That looks great. Let's compare it to our first one. All our holes line up perfectly. Can you see that? That's awesome. They are perfect match twins of each other. That's amazing. Okay, let's do our pages. I think I'm gonna try to do a couple at a time. So I'll do, let's try, let's try three. I've got two plus the acetate. Close that, lift that, push all the pegs in. Flush to the back and punch. Oh, that punch is way easier than the chipboard did. Okay, and then pull it out, line everybody up. Go to the second to last hole. We're just gonna follow the exact same directions. Get our little lever pushed down. Pull out number four. Lift the lever. Perfect. Okay, those go right in there like that. And then I think we can just go ahead and do all the rest of these, which will be one, two, three, and a piece of plastic. Acetate. Close, punches in. They're all facing the right direction. Punch. Open. Go to the second to last hole. Push the lever down. Hole number four. Punch. Lift the lever. And we got it. Everything's punched. Punching is done. Okay. Let's arrange our book again. So we have front cover, first page, second page, third. This is the back cover. Fourth page, fifth page, sixth page. And I'm going to end with the plastic. And then that guy, right? So our book is in order. All our holes are punched. It's time to bind. That's where we're going to use this side of the of the machine. I'm going to close this just so I can show it to you a little better. 
So this little guy, this is your hook hanger. That's what I call it. <laughs> and then this guy. Now this is 12 inches. This is how it comes out of the box. And we need it to fit this, which is how many holes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that means I need 15 of these guys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So just after 15, I'm going to come in here with my wire cutters and clip that, that apart. And the you can just use wire cutters from your garage, but um, we are, the cinch does make one that's perfectly coordinated and cute. And then you can just have your own. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Now these little pointy parts on the ends, we'll take care of that in a minute, okay? So let's lay that on top of our hanger, and it just is like another hand for you. Okay, and then we're gonna do not the covers. We don't want those just yet. We're gonna take all the guts. So only the guts. I know this is going to feel a little bit like you're going to do that wrong. But this is what we want is all the guts first. So get each little guy in there. Make sure that I didn't miss anybody. Okay, everybody's in there well. Everybody's on the right in the right hook and hole there. Perfect. This little hanger is so handy because, like I said, it is like having another set of hands. And then we're going to put the front cover on like how we want it. Okay. Now this is the next really big tip. It's not the end of the world if you don't do this, but the reason I didn't put the back, the last page or the back cover on is because when we cinch this, you're going to see the seam of where the wires come together. You're going to, oh, let me pinch this you would see this seam and we want to hide that seam. So to hide it, um, you're going to take your back cover. This is what I want the back to look like, right? So I'm going to put my back cover facing my front cover like that. So what we are looking at is the inside of the back cover. Okay. Now we are ready to cinch. I'm going to lift this off the hanger. Everybody is bound on there or, you know, in the binding and we're going to bring this back over and now we're going to do the actual cinch part. So remember, I already set this to five eighths by turning this little dial and right here in this little space right here is where I need to put the wires and I need to get this open end and this open end flush with the back of this machine. So I'm just going to set them in there and push them just all the way to the back. Okay. And I'm going to have to turn this machine so I can you know, handle it. <laughs> okay, we're still in frame. Okay, so I've got the little wires pushed flush against the back. I'm actually going to push them all the way this way. And I just have to give it two cinches. Okay. Looking good. And then we're going to cinch. And I'm, all I'm doing is pushing this down. And you don't have to guess how hard to push it because we've set the dial to tell you how hard to push it because that dial is specific to the diameter of the O-rings that you're, that you're cinching. Okay. So it's cinched all but two, and so I'm just going to move it down to get those other ones and cinch those. Okay, so our book is all nice and cinched together, and we just have these two pokey ends. You can take not the cutter part of your wire cutters, but the top part, and you can turn those down so that they don't get snagged on anything. You know, you don't want this getting stuck on your apron or getting hooked onto something, and then you know, pulling your wire. Okay, and now we open and close it. So we're going to take that seam and hide it now on the inside of our book. And now we have our book perfectly bound. We just made a recipe book, you guys. And is everything perfectly in the right spot? Yes, it is. And the right direction. This is cute. And see, I still think it's going to be so fun to write down my recipes, laminate them, and then we can just stick them in here, add tags, notes, photos, more recipes if we want to. Fun way if you're have, you know, if you're going to be a new mother-in-law and you want to give new recipe, you know, your family recipes to your future daughter-in-law, that would be fun. Um, family, if you want to save family um, recipes, you know, this um, summer um, lost my grandmother and um, one of the treasures that I, um, inherited from her is uh, 
some of her old recipe books that, um, sorry, <laughs> that were, uh, you know, uh, some, some of those church books, you know, where you guys get together, everybody in the church and the community gets together and they put, they submit recipes in sort of a, a fundraiser of sorts. But it's just really special because it's everybody is all, it's so much of my family and their recipes in this, in this book. And I love that, but I can take some of those special ones that she marked in and all of that. And I can photocopy those, laminate them and bind them into a book that I could share with a lot of other people so that it's not just mine. Sorry. Anyway, I think this is just an amazing gift that you could give to somebody, make for yourself. You can make planners and notebooks and journals. Um, just remember to use a little lever so you don't go off the edge. Um, and I think it'd just be really fun to make little notebooks. Just, just never ending the amount of things you can make with the cinch. Really enjoyed being with you guys today. I hope you had a good time and learned some stuff and are interested in the cinch. The cinch has been around for a long time. This might look a little bit different to you because it's gone through other colors. This is the latest and greatest version, but it basically works the same as all, as you know, whatever it did. It's just, this is the newer, newer color version. Remember, you can close this and put the lever up, the little seat belt lever there to keep the, the lever down. And there is a mini version of this. It just does things a little smaller. You don't have the whole options like this, but it still does all the math, helps you with the math. It's, they're very clever. I will link the video to the mini video that I did um, a few months ago um, in the comments below. If I missed any of your comments and you're wondering or you had questions that I missed, I'm going to go back and read all of your comments and I will answer those as soon as I can. And then I want to invite you guys to come back. Um, actually, go to the Paper Crafts group. If you're not already a member of the Paper Crafts group, I would encourage you to join that. I will also put a link for that in the comments. Um, coming up on December 29th, I'm going to do thank you cards and we're going to do these super adorable um, little mini slim line size cards with this cute little birdie. I'll show you how to color with alcohol based markers and we'll do a little light stenciling and die cutting. This will be really fun. We do a lot of really fun things over on the card on the paper crafts group. So I hope you'll join us over there. That's sort of my, my main hangout. And I do like to do giveaways over there. We have lots of challenges and just, it's really fun sharing community. If you've ever used the cinch and would like to share things that you've done, please post pictures of it. We'd love to see what you guys make. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a great holiday. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.